Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Santiago Rodriguez Papa, and I'm here with Matthew Andres Moreno uh, to talk to you about Conduit, our best Zephyr asynchronous parallel and distributed computing library. Um, Conduit uh, is a library intended to make uh, creating parallel um, simulations easier. Uh, it does this by abstracting all the interprocess interthread communication away from the user. Uh, we support both perfect communication and a best effort communication model. Uh, it's a header-only library, which means it's very lightweight, and it's developed in C++17. Uh, we, it's distributed uh, as free software under the MIT license. Uh, to go a bit deeper into what this best effort communication model is, uh, we have the concept of a sender and a receiver. Uh, the sender can send messages at any moment. There's no need to do any kind of synchronization or waiting. It's fully asynchronous. And then uh, you have to be willing to uh, drop some messages if there's a backup. Uh, and the receiver can receive messages whenever they become available. Uh, this is as soon as hardware allows it, ideally. And there's also no synchronization. Uh, messages may be discarded in favor of uh, the newest available message. This is called a jump, where you just jump ahead to the last message. Um, this is an, an example animation of what the perfect communication model would look like. In this case, the buffer increases as new messages go in. Uh, this is uh, an animation of what the best different communication model looks like. Uh, since the buffer is full, the newest messages just get dropped. Okay, so we model this. Uh, we we model all of this in the idea of a conduit, which is a set of an inlet, a duct, and an outlet. Uh, you put your messages into inlets and then you receive your messages from outlets. These, uh, these inlets and outlets are connected via ducts. Uh, there's different types of ducts. We have interthread, intrathread, and interprocess communication. They can all be seamless, seamlessly replaced at compile time. Um, this offers very convenient over the composition because it allows you to just uh, swap them out without having to actually worry about what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, we also offer this idea of a no operation duct. Uh, which is used uh, mainly for benchmarking and debugging purposes, but it, I, uh, what it does is just not communicate the inlet and the outlet at all. Okay, so I'll take over to talk to you a little bit about how you would use this library from a high level API point of view. So this library is uh, def defined kind of around the idea that the user has a set of intercommunicating simulation elements. And the first thing you have to provide the library is the actual pattern of, of connectivity and communication between these simulation elements. So this is just a directed graph. Um, here we've got 23 simulation elements. And for example, simulation element zero is communicating with simulation element one and simulation element one is also sending messages back to simulation element zero in this topology. And here, as you can see, uh, we have a just a simple grid topology uh, laid out. Uh, the library has features that allow you to really easily generate common types of connection topologies like this one. However, you can also um, provide arbitrary topologies to the library as well. The second uh, thing that you need to be providing a library is a delegation rule. And this is just a mapping that tells you how to assign simulation elements to processes and threads that are available at runtime. So for example, here simulation elements 0, 1, and 6 are all delegated to process 0, thread 0. And uh, you can write your own delegation rule, or um, the library has a built-in system uh, using the Metis uh, graph partitioning library that will assign simulation elements in a way that minimizes the amount of inter-process and inter-thread communication. So once we have these simulation elements assigned, we want to be able to actually access the set of communication channels that have been created for uh, each simulation element. And so you can ask the library to uh, iterate over the communication uh, the communication channels that have been created for each simulation element. So here we're looking at the communication channels that were created for simulation element 15. Um, we have a set of 
outlets that we can read messages from, and we have a set of inlets that we can put messages into. Uh, and from this point of view, we don't have to worry at all about whether these uh, inlets and outlets are spanning threads or processes. Uh, there's just a, a uniform interface um, for uh, communication, uh, whether it be inter-thread, inter-process, or all within the same thread. So the, the library is built so that the actual implementations used for inter-thread and inter-process communication, as well as communication within a thread, can all be swapped out at compile time using um, uh, template metaprogramming. And so this allows for uh, you to select implementations that uh, have certain uh, uh, performance characteristics or have uh, other um, characteristics that are necessary in your particular use case. And in addition to the, in addition to the implementations that are provided by the library, you can also write your own uh, inter-thread and inter-process implementations that can um, be integrated into the library. And we'll integrate with the library. So this uh, type of modularity allows for you to kind of um, use sophisticated communication mechanisms and um, put together some optimizations without having to worry about the complexity elsewhere inside of your code. So uh, for example, one of the optimizations that's uh, built into a implementation for inter-process communication available through the library is consolidating messages that are going between the same two processes. So um, instead of having to uh, send, uh, you know, two MPI messages between thread zero on process A and thread zero on process B, um, under the hood, we can detect uh, all of the communication channels that are going between these two processes and consolidate this into fewer uh, underlying calls to the uh, to the MPI runtime. All right, and I will hand it back over to Santiago to talk a little bit about benchmark design for how we actually evaluated the performance of uh, the best effort communication model. Uh, so in order to assess uh, this best effort communication model against the uh, perfect communication model, we designed two benchmarks uh, that test different situations. The first one is a graph coloring problem. Uh, in this problem, basically, each node has to communicate with its neighbors and choose a color that's not already assigned to them. Uh, this algorithm is, named, is uh, based after the work by Leith et al. in 2012. And it's a very communication heavy problem because each of the nodes has to communicate on every update to check what the neighbor's colors are. Uh, there's not really much uh, computation needed because it's just a randomly picking a color that's not already chosen. Uh, the second problem is a digital evolution problem. Uh, this, uh, we basically run Dishni, which is a simulation uh, used uh, to study uh, multicellularity. And it's a very compute heavy and memory intensive uh, program, but there's not really much communication between nodes. So we have different, uh, we have a range of synchronization levels ranging from uh, synchro syncing on every update uh, through some partial synchronizations uh, every like certain time frames to uh, not syncing at all. Uh, and then at, at last we have a control, which is just uh, testing to see what the performance impact of running all these simulations are when they're not communicating with each other at all. Uh, some experimental details. Uh, these problems are all uh, weakly scaled. This means that there's a problem size that's fixed for each CPU. Uh, they will run on MSU's uh, High Performance Computing Center. And um, the problem topology is a 2D torus. Uh, you'll see the graphs are 10 replicate timings, and the bars on them are uh, bootstrap 95% confidence intervals. Now I'll hand it over to Matthew so, they can, so he can discuss the results. All right, so we performed these uh, two benchmark problems in both a multi-processing and a multi-threading context. So starting out with the graph coloring problem, 
uh, in a multi-processing context. We saw a significant improvement of the number of updates that could be calculated uh, per second for, uh, for best effort communication, um, kind of run modes one, two, and three, compared to the fully synchronous uh, perfect communication model. And we were also able to see uh, significant improvement in solution quality for the best effort communication model. So uh, what we're seeing here is the number of conflicts that are left over in the graph coloring after the algorithm is run for a fixed period of time. And so lower is better here. And um, you can see that at uh, 16 and 64 processes, we have significantly better solutions for the uh, fully asynchronous best effort um, communication model compared to the perfect communication model. And of course, as you would expect in our control, we have also have better results in that because um, in the control there's no communication. So there's lots of conflicts left over. All right, moving on to the multi-threading context, we see similar results. However, um, the, uh, the relationship um, doesn't become apparent until we scale up to 64 threads at which we see a significantly better uh, algorithm update uh, calculating speed compared of the best effort model compared to the fully synchronous model. And um, you can see that a lot of the overhead that's causing a slowdown here is not necessarily due to synchronization or communication, uh, but to, due to other factors, um, due to kind of our control with no communication between threads also slowing down. We can also see at 64 threads, um, significantly better uh, solution quality of the fully asynchronous best effort uh, model compared to the uh, synchronous uh, perfect communication model. All right, now moving to the digital evolution problem in a multi-processing context. Uh, we were able to see using uh, best effort communication, uh, scaling up to 64 processes that were running on 64 separate nodes inside of our high performance computing center, um, around 80% efficiency at 60, 64 processes. And this performance uh, was significantly better uh, under the best effort communication model compared to the uh, fully synchronous model at 16 and 64 processes, where at, when we got up to 64 processes with fully synchronous communication, we only had about 50% efficiency. And multi-threading with the digital evolution model, uh, we're able to see a similar result um, where at uh, 16 and 64 threads, we had significantly better performance under the best effort model compared to the fully synchronous perfect communication model. Um, and again, some of the slowdown as we're going from one thread on the left up to 64 threads on the right is due to factors not related to communication um, as shown by kind of the the decrease in the uh, update rate of our um, no communication control. Um, however, uh, we are seeing a significantly better performance of the best effort model compared to the synchronous model here. All right. Um, one of the main takeaways here is that uh, the performance of the uh, best effort model becomes uh, especially uh, parent at really large thread and process counts. And so uh, this suggests that, um, that, this, that this approach really starts to become useful uh, when we're um, uh, moving into, into large scale uh, computations and that it's uh, for only working with handfuls of processor, handfuls of threads, kind of uh, the best effort communication model um, will give uh, really uh, dramatic um, improvements. Uh, we saw inconsistent performance with our partial synchronization uh, techniques. And so we need to kind of uh, reevaluate the utility of those um, uh, 
uh, and see whether um, those actually kind of uh, would be concretely useful in any uh, use case. And finally, uh, we found um, really excitingly with the graph coloring benchmark that best effort communication can not only improve scaling efficiency, um, just measuring kind of the amount of computational updates that you can perform per second on all of your hardware, but it can also lead to tangibly uh, better solution quality coming out within a, a fixed period of time. With that, I'd like to acknowledge uh, my co-author and collaborator, uh, Santiago, who's an undergraduate at MSU, uh, my advisor, Charles Ofria, uh, and another undergraduate at MSU who's uh, helped with the software development for this project, uh, Catherine Perry. Here are the references that we cited on the slides, um, and here are some links to uh, the full data that we collected um, to perform our, while performing our benchmarks. Uh, link to the library on GitHub and to its documentation. And with that, we'd be happy to take questions. Thanks for your attention.